Hello, happy Thursday. Welcome to season two, episode 43 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and today we're going to play around with some double or also known as twin needles. And you might not realize just how many different things you can do with these twin needles. And some of you may have never even ventured to open the package, just looked at them and went, not for me. One needle is enough to deal with sometimes, isn't it? Hello, Tina from Texas and Mary Mike <laughs> from Buena Park, California. Wendy from the Adirondacks, welcome back. And Lorinda from Hood River, Oregon. Shady, Shady, yo, hi. I love your little wave eye emoji. How are you all today on this Veterans Day? And I'd like to give a shout out to all the veterans and, and all of the families of the veterans and, and my appreciation for protecting our beautiful America. And my father is a vet tonight. My sister Kat is actually visiting from New Jersey. And uh, my sister Therese, Kat, and I, and possibly my brother John will be taking my daddy out for Veterans Day dinner, so I can't run late today. The uh, I can run a little late, but not as late as I have gone in the past. Are any of you taking out someone special, a vet, for dinner tonight? Are any of you veterans? Because, you know, even veterans, so. Hello, Veronica Savage from Alabama. Welcome. And Shady, you're from Kansas City, Missouri. You can tell I've been there because I say it right. It's like coming to Prescott and uh, newbies come here and they say Prescott. And people that go to Missouri say Missouri until someone goes, it's not Missouri, it's Missouri. Or I may still not be saying it right. I got things from last week sitting out and I'm trying not to put things in the wrong spot so that's what this is really good for this is a little catch-all little table organizer that, that I designed using the octi hoops as the pattern if you didn't do that or haven't seen this one yet this is a really good fabrically speaking live episode showing you another use for your octi hoops yeah it's a pattern too it's a pattern for a square little organizer and there's three hoops so you get three different sizes so I'm a little disheveled. No surprise. This is my first time at wearing chartreuse. And uh, I'm fond of it. Have any of you worn chartreuse before? My mom used, my mom painted our, uh, one of our rooms in our house this color when I was younger. And I remember going, not really sure about that color. <laughs> and now I'm wearing it. Okay. Today is also the anniversary of my mother's passing six years ago. So if I'm a little off today, it is uh, it could be related to that as well. I'm missing my mommy today. And that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. So you may be thinking, I'm sure she's going to use the double needle with the sequins and ribbon foot. And yes, but you can use the actual double needle with all three of the creative feet and the octi hoops and that's something i've never shown before ever using a double needle for free motion and now i would only do that for free motion embroidery so we'll see how much i can get done and odds are realistically there won't be a zipper pouch today let's see so this is an example of different trims that we use double needles on a lot of times we use them on ribbon and rickrack, not sequins. And there's different size ribbon, different size rickrack. So that is why there's different size double needles. Why isn't it going? My 
One of my buttons isn't working, you guys. Well, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a Thursday if something wasn't working right. I just was going to show you the website and show you where to go to find the double needles. But if after we're finished here, you click on the description, the little arrow that goes like this, you click on it and it has a description of this video. In addition to that, all the links and the top link takes you right to the double needles on creativefeet.com. And there's different size tips, different styles of needles, because sometimes you sew with a stretch needle through stretch fabric, I mean a double needle through stretch fabric. And when you would do that is elastic. Can you imagine sewing elastic with a double needle? Well, it's a technique I've, I've never shown on, the only time I ever showed it was at a show. So should I show you? Hi, Darlene Woods from Indiana. Welcome. Well, I was gonna iron. I think I'll start with the elastic since I was talking about it. And if you don't have ribbon, you can take and fuse fabrics together, wrong sides together, and then cut them in strips to create fabric like ribbon to sew with double needles. This was something, this is what inspired me to talk about this this week. I was cutting, or I was actually doing a photo shoot for the sequins and ribbon foot. And I was squaring up my fabric and then I went, oh, look at, we could do this. We could actually have three different fabrics, cut them in different sizes, using different size double needles, sew them in three different steps and end up stacking fabric. So in answer to your question, Shady, about quilting with a double needle, this is why you don't want to quilt with a double needle. A double needle shares one bobbin and it gives you this look. So that's what it would look like on the back of your quilt. That being said, if you quilt without your backing and you and, and then you put your batting on after, well, I suppose you could. And I suppose, I suppose I'm willing and brave enough to, to try it today. Here's a project that one of you has been begging me to show. And this is, this was one of my customers made this using one of the techniques in the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook. And this is called corded pin tucks. Now, normally when you sew a pin tuck, you can only sew it straight. With the technique that I came up with using the pearls and piping foot and cording, she was able to create a cat. <laughs> and this is a very unique pillow. As you can see, and it's, she gave it to me after her granddaughter was done with it, <laughs> so it's 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 aged. But you can see the the rise in the stitching, and isn't that just really cute and clever? I love that she used it for that. So I'm going to show that as well today, and that was done with the pearls and piping foot. All right, so elastic first, I said, and this is a totally unique technique. Because generally you sew elastic and you stitch it to one side and then you flip your fabric over and then you stitch again to encase the ribbon. And that would be for like a wrist on a little girl's dress. I'm going to get out my needles here and hopefully I have all the every size and style of double needle in here. If not, I may have to run in the other room. This is the Universal, which is a, it runs similar to the Universal Needles. When you hear me say use a 9014 Universal Needle. So you see this one's a 116 and it's a single needle. Let me see if I can get a 9014 so this, I don't confuse you. Okay, so this is the same size needle. This is it in a double. And this is it in a single. The size of the needle is the 90 that represents the size of the needle tip or the hole that it will create in the fabric. The additional number, the three comma zero, in my opinion, should be a 3.0. 
it represents the spacing between the needles. So the 3.0 twin needle would be good for a ribbon or any trim that where that needle is up against the edges of whatever it is you're trying to sew it on. So this is that fabric that I cut. Now I could go to a 4.0, I believe, and get really close to the edge. Now, this is not finished, so I'd be more likely to use this with a little bit of wiggle room or fraying room so that the fabric can fray and it will still be attached to the fabric. And on a ribbon like this, you have that kind of beaded edge on it. If you go all the way to the beading, well, it's going to have a little bit of a harder time going through right there. And know that ribbon like this, satin ribbon, doesn't bend. It has no flexibility to it at all. So you might think you can only sew ribbon in straight rows. And uh, that would be true using any other foot. But with the sequins and ribbon foot, we can sew ribbon around in circles. But we're going to do elastic before I forget. <laughs> and because elastic is stretchy, even if I sew the elastic on a non-stretch fabric, I still want to use a stretch needle for sewing the elastic. And this, the, uh, sh the stretch needles in the, in the Schmetz line have a blue little square on the top instead of a red one. That helps you to identify it should you not have your package after you've removed it from your sewing machine. There's only one sewing machine on the market that can't use a double needle bigger or wider than 3.0, and that's the Singer Slant machine. And that has to do with how the needle comes down at an angle into your sewing machine. So any wider than that will actually hit the inner workings of the machine. I dropped a package of needles. One sec. Because it wouldn't be a Thursday if I weren't dropping things. Feel free to ask questions as I keep peeking at the chat. So this is a really small twin needle. There's a hair or something. Do I have another double stretch that's bigger? One day I'm going to have tabs in here and I'll be able to sort through like a filing cabinet. Do you think it'll ever happen? I wonder if Amy, you know, Better Days is in here. It is the first Thursday after the time changed, so I'm sure some people will have forgotten. I'm just going to use the smaller double needle rather than running to the, to the inventory. And you'll still get the benefit of it. So one of the things we do when we use a double needle is we have to have two threads to go through the needle eyes. And if you take your threads and you just run them through together and then take them through the eye, they can get tangled up inside of the sewing machine. So we have to do a separating of the threads right before the eye of the needle. Another thing you're gonna be faced with is now you need two spools of the same color thread. However, you can use two of the same colors in a bobbin. So you can wind two bobbins of the same color thread and not have to get two spools. And then stack your bobbins on top of the thread dispenser, which is what I'm going to do here so you can see it. And if you're waiting on, on some of the wonderful, uh, the deco bob bobbins, because we ran out of the master packs, they're on their way. And so was any other thread that you see missing. Where's my master pack of, of bobbins? Oh, all the way over there. Well, I tossed them over here. There we go. This is quicker than me winding a couple bobbins. And this is Deco Bob, it's 80 weight thread, so it's fine to use in the needle as well as in the bobbin. It's good to have the same amount of thread on the bobbins as well. 
So you would want to wind your bobbins at the same, at that time, wind them the same amount so that they weigh the same to your sewing machine. Where's the end? There it is. It may seem really insignificant with something so little, but it does affect how the two threads go through the sewing machine. We want them to, we don't want one athlete better than the other in the race. We want both threads to feed exactly the same way. So both of them are winding off of the top. And now I can place them right there and take them over to the sewing machine. And take the thread that's in the machine out. And now I hold them together so that they cannot slip. So if I were to uh, just loosely just take them through the machine, they can get tangled up inside of the machine. So you hold on to them and then take them through the machine. If you have a vertical post on your sewing machine, you can use that as well in place of the thread dispenser. Every time I look at these bobbins, I get a, I just get all excited because I'm like, I don't have to wind any of those. <laughs> and it's a neat little tray that you can use again and again. Okay, so down here, this is where we have to separate the threads. One thread goes B and I, it's gonna be the left needle for me, goes behind that last thread guide, but I need to put the needle on, don't I? This is one time you can't use your needle threader on your sewing machine. And I will be offering these soon. This is a tiny little hook on the end of this that allows you to go through your needle. Now, if you can't see well, you can actually take the needle off of the machine and thread it close to you. But if you do that, you gotta make sure that that flat side is facing the correct direction for your, for your sewing machine when you do so. Another way to do this would be to Put the needle up in the machine first. And that's why I like this little threader because I can use it that way. Amy made it. I wasn't sure if you were gonna miss out because of the time change, but you live here, so there'd be no excuse for you. <laughs> All right. So when you use this, you wanna think about which way the hook is going before you put it in the eye of the needle and you come from the back side of the needle. I apologize, we don't have these on the site yet. I'm gonna need my glasses, I think. Yes. Where are you, glasses? Show yourself. I thought I just had them out here. Did they fall? I've been dropping things. Sorry about that. Here we go. It's easier if you don't have the thread in your hand at the same time when you're doing this. Oh, it was in there. And it's even better if you can see well enough to not even need a threader. So I wanna take this one and go behind the guide and the next needle is not gonna go behind that last guide. No matter how many times I use this threader, I can't remember which way the hook is. This was the only reason I was hesitant to teach this. Because of my eyesight. Get a little closer. Oh, I bent that. That's why it's not as easy as it was. 
Come on, Claire. Oh my goodness. And I generally recommend lingerie thread and the needle for elastic. Oh goodness. I've never had so much trouble. There we go. <laughs> I just threaded that into my finger. Oh my. I'm hooked. <laughs> so I'm a fish on a fish on a hook. The comedy of it all. There we go. This is what live TV is all about. Watching all of the faux pas and isn't this one fun? This is one you want to use a double needle on and you can kind of see a thread running through it as if it is a double needle that sewed it together. So we can actually use that as well. See how much time we have. Elastic. Okay. Traditionally, we sew elastic like this, sewing it to the fabric, attaching it, secures it, and then we would fold it over and over again, and then sew with like a straight stitch so that it looks all clean. But the elastic is not allowed to roll. That's one of my techniques. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to in case as we sew using a double needle, it makes a really interesting sheared effect. I cut some fabric really quick. Yesterday I started my day with a phone call and then the, and then there was a as soon as I hung up there was another one and another one. I didn't brush my hair till well let's just say I almost didn't brush my hair. <laughs> if I didn't have to actually go somewhere, I probably wouldn't have. Since I'm not making anything, I'm just cutting some fabric. So you can see the technique, because that's what we're doing here. Doing technique sewing. So two threads are going through the needle, plural. Get that microphone out of the way. There we go. This works for like little girls sleeves and doll dresses. I haven't done this in, since since I did shows. It's been a couple of years. We didn't cut that very straight, but this one was torn, so maybe it was straighter. So we're going to take our elastic and you know how you would sew an encasement and then use a safety pin and feed it through? You could do that and then sew it using this technique or you can just fold it over. I promise it's worth it. <laughs> and then over again. And you put the foot down on it. And we're going to use regular pressure. So if you have always want to double check, make sure that your pressure is set to the full length. If I want to sew with the right side on top because the bobbin is sharing two needle or the two needles share one bobbin. It looks messy as I showed before. So here's where you're seeing me use the sequin and ribbon foot without putting it into the guide. So it doesn't matter how big the elastic is, you can do this. I just keep dropping stuff. So I'm coming down a little bit and doing that roll again, just kind of feeling it. And again, there. It, I may not have it rolled right up there. Let's see. So you can see better what I'm doing. So the elastic is flat and you come over 
and then the top comes over. And you're able to stretch the elastic toward you. And the foot holds the elastic. We haven't sewn a stitch yet. And you can see, let's see, see how much I'm able to stretch it all the way out? And it's remaining in position beneath the foot. That's one of the unique features of this foot. If it doesn't work like that for you, check your feet dogs. They may not be down or they may not be up. Especially if you use the scissor button on your machine because when you do that, it drops the, the feed dogs to help you remove the foot or remove the fabric out from beneath the foot. Something I don't really like. Okay, so, oh, and I'm using a straight stitch. Center needle position, that's really important because I should have checked that before I even did this. So the opening in your throat plate is a certain width and the needle must be able to fit within that width, both the needles. So if your needle is set to the left needle position, well, one needle might hit the throat plate and the other one goes through and you'll break the needle the first stitch you try. Liquid base for this, no. We need this to be free freestanding. This is a little close of a shot. Could have done this with the camera further away. Another tech, another note for this, first off, is center needle position, straight stitch, length, five so longest your machine will do and then you stretch the elastic toward you as you run the machine i can't see anything because the microphone's right in front of me there we go so my left hand is steering and my right hand is stretching and in essence what you're doing is you're having a tug of war with your sewing machine I must be doing something different because it's usually easier than this I may normally do this with the fabric the other direction because because my brain is going what are we doing so stretch it stretch it out grab it and then sew from where you're at to where you're going and normally you'd be back here like this and when you stretch from the back and then stretch from the front what you're doing is you're risking the the needles to be bent by you pulling in both directions so that's why i don't recommend you do that now we're just steering looking at the front and what happens is you get sheared fabric is the most beautiful elastic technique you're seeing it for the first time so we come over and you could mark your elastic and your fabric inside so that you know that you're stretching the right amount. So this elastic would have a mark here. Let me see. So you'd have a mark there and the fabric would be marked there and you wanna have the elastic mark meet the mark on the fabric. So you peek inside, pull it down, bring the fabric over so that at that spot and then plant your finger and sew to the next mark. I'm gonna only do that much because it's about showing you a bunch of different techniques today. Isn't that perfect? Isn't that lovely? I love it. So I didn't have it folded under very well. I'm trying, this, this is where you can see the, the stitch back there. So I definitely didn't grab it well. I think it's because I made it just too small. So my brain did not like that. But you can get the idea. This is what you'll have on the front. And it's very, very attractive. So while I have this on here, I'm going to talk about stretch fabric since we have a stretch needle on. Some of you may have wanted to sew athletic wear and have thought about or considered getting a cover stitch machine. Well, this satin edge foot and a double needle will give you the ability to mimic what you get with a cover stitch machine. Hopefully I have some stretch fabric right there. Let's see.
this is tremendously stretchy so it will work and this is all about technique today sorry for those of you who wanted me to do a christmas present every week my sister is my christmas present she came into town and so that kind of slowed me down i had all these ideas for today doesn't mean i won't pick up the uh, process <laughs> there's a thread that is static electrified found my glasses you might be able to liquid base that let me know if it works for you feels like it's getting hotter by the second in here okay so an instance where you'd want to do a cover stitch would be hemming a t-shirt for those of you who are short like I am you may have to hem your t-shirts one of the things I sell you to do that with is our stick and rinse tape which we're out of I'm sorry that we have run out of things know that I continue to try to get that back in stock and meanwhile I thought I should see if I can do this another way because when you hem a t-shirt you're going across the stretch of the fabric so this is the stretchiest why is that cut so weird do you ever cut fabric like that <laughs> All right, I'll just chop a little off. And that's why I end up with all these weird cuts. So the nice thing about the tape that we are out of right now, and, and that is as of uh, November 11th of 2021, we are currently out of stick and rinse tape. If you have the Octi hoops, you have some in your kit. And if you were lucky enough to buy some before we sold out and you have it in any of the widths that we offer when we have good inventory on it then you have what you need you can just cut it in smaller strips sorry about that i had to i had to cough all of a sudden i couldn't even tell you i was about to cough so what the stick and rinse tape does is it allows you to tape across. There's so much dog hair in here. Come on, I got a roll in here. Stick and rinse also lets you print on it so you can make little stickers for embroidery. So if you have the Octi, if you have a little bit in your kit. But we generally have it in, in these one inch rolls and the purpose of that See I can't get the end? Darn it, that's so frustrating. You can get scotch tape or any type of regular tape and tape across at an angle and then peel back and it peels it right off. Or you can get your finger a little wet and it will start to make it sticky so that you can peel it off. And that's the actual tape. And what this is is water-soluble stabilizer that does not stretch. and it prevents the fabric from stretching. And then you would place it on your garment. No matter what, we are gonna have this again. And then I'm gonna play around and show you what it looks like without it. And I really do believe the stick and rinse or the liquid base glue, if you glue it and let it fully dry, will kind of give you a similar benefit. 
The difference though is that this then gives you the perfect fold for a one inch hem. And then you, the satin edge foot, you're gonna sew on the top and you won't be able to see the edge, but the satin edge foot is so sensitive, it feels the edge. So we take this off. So my mind is, sorry I went quiet, I'm trying to think of another way that we can achieve a similar thing. Where's my satin edge foot? I put it back in here. So the satin edge foot has a guide and it's made up of this little washer as well. <laughs> There's no washer there. That's the pearls and piping foot. It has this little wire or uh, pin and that we're gonna set so that the guide itself is up against the edge. Sorry, this is so hard to see because it's black. Here we go. Ooh, my snap on adapter is all wiggly because I didn't have it screwed on tight. Bad habit. Never do that. Always make sure yours is tight. Okay. So what I'm wanting is the stitch to be right along the edge. Got to keep my needle center so you move the guide over. You guys are so quiet. I keep looking and there's no chatting going on. Are any of you ready for Thanksgiving? Have all your stuff purchased? Sorry for all the thread and dog hair, <laughs> if you can see it. And we wanna turn the hand wheel before we just start sewing. You can reduce the needle tension a little bit, like one whole number smaller. And that will make it so that the bobbin thread isn't so tight and it'll be a little bit flatter, more like a cover stitch on the back when we're done. So it's a gentle push from the right to the underside of that guide, and we want our pressure to be loose. So I'm taking it down to one from four. Am I there? I'm so far from the machine. And you can hear the needle going through the fabric. I just pulled on it. But it does a zigzag stitch on that, on that side and it gives you a double needle stitch on the top. Sorry for the how dark this is. I'm gonna pull out the tape here now and just kind of see what we get without it. It'd also be better with a bigger double needle. But you'll notice my threads are still intact. And frequently when you'd use a double needle, one thread would get tangled up with the other. It's actually working really well. Look at that. What do you know? But our feet are like Teflon feet. They glide over the fabric. So two threads on the top and an overcast on the bottom. Isn't that nice? I will do some photography, close-up shots of this and put it in the school for you guys to get a better look since this black fabric is so hard to see. That was beautiful without the tape at all. So give it a try. That's super stretchy fabric also. So let's see how much it stretches. You can see that's a lot of stretch. What do you think? 
Any other times we need stretch or double needle with stretchy. Another time would be if you're going to make a memory quilt and you want to do some decorative top stitching along the outsides of the t-shirts, you could use it for that as well and use our satin edge foot for that. I wanted to try something um, with yarn. I've never done this before, so it'll be a first time, but I need a bigger needle because I was going to use this really large yarn and see how it reacts with batting. See if we can't do some trapunto style like stem work on a quilt. Should I do that? If you want me to do that, you got to give me a thumbs up because you guys are the quietest you've ever been or there's something wrong with the chat. I'm sure I have another one ready. Hey, by the way, I did one of my quilt squares. <laughs> I came in here to do some quilting and then, or to do some work and I went, it's Sunday, I'm gonna make a quilt square. I only got one done. One quilt square closer to having my quilt done so I can teach you guys how to quilt a large quilt. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. My nails are fake. <laughs> These are like the kiss fingernails and they, they glue on. That's why my nails always look good. I actually have a video showing how I put them on in my this and that playlist. Should you want to learn how. Got to limit myself because I think I'm going to really like this. I might get carried away. So we have some batting. And I thought this would be really cool on like a child's blanket. Maybe use that twin needle pin tuck concept. However, we don't want to have it be a really hard cording. We want it to be soft so a baby can enjoy it. Probably should just put the yarn on top. Hi, Iris. Welcome. So now I'm gonna put this satin edge foot away and pull out the pearls and piping foot. And I don't normally use the pearls and piping foot for yarn. So we'll see how this goes. The pearls and piping foot has a tunnel that is unique to all other copies of my foot because I am the original inventor of the beading foot. All other companies are copiers and they have a different shaped tunnel, different shaped front end. They don't have this little washer that slides left and right. And, uh, and see how big our opening is? That makes it so all sewing machines can use this and you can go really wide on your zigzag stitch. This needle is too close together. I'm taking that out. Resist the urge to bark, Chase. <laughs> we'll see how he does. I had some of this out already. I try really hard not to have my yarn get all messy. So this is one of the things I do, I pull, and then I can see on this end which one pulled. I'm gonna flip it over. Pull and it's going to pull something on this end. There it is. Although those of you who are knitters probably have do it the right way. <laughs> Which would be pull from the center. I don't know. I rarely have a good experience once I take the paper off of a skein of yarn. Got to be committed to make it into a ball. That should be enough. I 
I'm sure you guys appreciate the purple yarn. Isn't that pretty? And this is chenille and Bernat. And they call it velvet. It is a chenille and it's super soft. It's absolutely lovely. I'm sure it'd be great to get a sweater out of that too. It's probably pronounced Bernay. Center pull is much easier and neater. Have you guys ever had some a, a gentleman take your extension cord and wrap it all up all pretty and have it be all twisty and go see all you got to do is do this when you take it when you want to use it I've never been able to just do that and have it work so I have the same issue with my yarn I put that away open ah. <sighs> I'm not surprised Amy has the ability I have a feeling you're really organized from the comments you make and your brain can do that I got too much creativity in me so now I'm going to go to a, a width wider than my yarn and I'm thinking a four spacing which I may not have in here I may have to go steal one out of the inventory. We'll see. I used to only bring 3.0s to the shows with me and then sew ribbon the same size all the time so I didn't have to think about it. But in reality, I use all of the different sizes. Now here's an 8.0 spacing. Not all of you can use this. In fact, I may not even be able to use it. I, I've always wondered. I'm pretty sure I cannot. You can see how wide that needle is. This would require a throat plate at least 9 millimeters wide. I don't think this machine has it. Well, it does fit in there. This is how you would check to see that it'll fit. But there's no wiggle room in there. I, I'm, I'm not willing. So for those of you who have a nine millimeter wide zigzag stitch, your machine is set up to use these. So it's good to kind of know this before you buy double needles. So you don't buy needles you don't not able to even use on your machine. I'm, I'm about to Oh, I found one. Okay, so now we have a 4.0 twin needle. Remember, the Singer Slant machine can't go 4.0. So you just go down in your yarn size and... So you see the needle can go on either side of that yarn. And that's the goal. Remember, I've never done this one before. First time for everything. Center needle position. It's always a good idea to put a double needle on when the machine has no fabric over it so you don't accidentally not realize that you have a, gone from a center needle to a left needle position. Have any of you ever used the double needle before? I'm just going to give it a go and see if I can't thread it without that threader. I never used to say give it a go. All of a sudden I started saying that. I think it's because I watch BBC shows. Starting to use some of their lingo. Come on, Claire, you can do this. So we just have to talk nice to ourselves. So are you talking about Wendy? Are you talking about the extension cord? Then I had this guy show me how to undo my hose and he wound my hose upside down from the way I normally do it. And then he goes, you can just pull on it and it'll, it'll just untangle or unwind and 
you'll never have it tangle again. Oh my goodness, was that a disaster. <laughs> Stretch fabric. Trying to find some pretty stretch fabric that's close by. Do you guys see it? <laughs> this is stretchy, but this is actually a little shawl that you make for infants and it goes over their head and they can't scratch their face because their arms are inside of it. It's basically just like a skirt for a toddler, but it's for an infant. And use the fold over elastic here. And would you guys like me to put this as a pattern inside of the school? I should probably do that. And this is done with minky and ping pong. Now pom pom style piping in it. Okay. Oh, we got this. Well, it'll be interesting. <laughs> it's a little bit of minky. So it has some stretch to it. I don't know, maybe too thick. Where's the yarn? I think this will be better for cording, corded pin tuck. We'll do both on this. Let's see. Have you guys thought of another reason to use a double needle? There is a technique in quilting called stained glass quilting. And I was going to just teach you guys square dance or stain. <laughs> I always want to say square dance when I think stained glass. I was going to teach you a stained glass project today. And still we'll do that in the future. So this is going to give us a little bit of a, a rise, but I'm hoping that the pearls and piping foot, and it will be really hard for the pearls and piping foot to feel this because it's soft. <laughs> Sorry. So when you push down on yarn, it flattens out. And that's the where this shouldn't work. We'll see. Sometimes things work even though they shouldn't. So it's definitely... I want to see if it, if it steers the yarn. You probably would like to see it from this point. <laughs> so I have the yarn beneath. And you can see it has like a... It's a... It's pretty thick, but this foot should not be able to move it below there. And it seems like it is. Oh, it definitely did it, you guys. Look at that. It took the yarn over, but that's because this is such a thick yarn. Even though it's thick though, it's not hard. It's so a child is not gonna feel get hurt by kneeling on it or anything. Cool, huh? And then I thought, well, I have never used a double needle on the top of yarn. I should try that and see what that looks like. This is play day. What time is it? We're doing good. So I'm using the same foot, and I'd usually use the sequins and ribbon foot with yarn on top, but it's not going to be catching it enough. I might be able to move my needle over, but I don't, I'm really trying not to teach you to do that. I moved it one millimeter over, so I'm okay. Nope, it's missing it all together. Shoo-wee. Okay. What else can we do with this? Well, I'm just going to see what it looks like. It's not going to look good on the back, but see, I mentioned before, if you're using a double needle in your quilting, well, 
the back side's gonna look like that, but if you don't put your back fabric on until after you've done double needlework, you can actually do some double needle stitching instead of it being straight stitching on a quilt. Well, you can't really see it on here, white thread on white, but here the batting all by itself did, did raise it, not quite as much as with the yarn, but that's kind of neat too. I wonder if it'll feel it. So the side of the foot feels the edge of that. And we can do another stitch equally spaced apart. Wow, that went really well. Definitely not the best fabric color choices for the camera. There we go. See that? That's just the batting that made it kind of pull up. So it's twin needle pin tuck is what that is without cording. Now we take regular fabric. And if you use a nylon lingerie thread in the bobbin, this foot will give you to some degree a, a twin needle pin tuck on regular fabric as well. I'm gonna take my tension back up now. And you can see the, the fabric starts to, to get sucked up in there. That's a little long for the stitch length. Go back down. Because I had it for elastic. So that's a twin needle pin tuck achieved with the pearls and piping foot. And you can see that the it didn't work as well until I changed the tension. When I increased the tension, or the stitch length was too long, sorry. But once I shorten the stitch length, then it just looks like a straight stitch. See how perfect that looks on the back? And it measures in eighth inch pin tuck. Okay, now let's see. I'm trying to think of everything I've ever done with a double needle. Oh, you're gonna love this. This one is what I call inlaid beading. It's done upside down. And what you do is you draw on your fabric a design And you can use a straight stitch or you can actually curve. This would be the time when you, the hardest or the most intimidating of all of the techniques is this one. Sorry, guys. We're going to use cording and beads. Oh, the batting is so annoying. No whining, no whining. This is when we usually use invisible thread in the needle and the bobbin. And if I don't, it's not going to look as good. Do I have an invisible bobbin already wound? The invisible thread I recommend is the nylon, 100% nylon, not the poly, not the mono poly, only the 100% nylon, 4,000 in diameter, invisible thread. We offer it at creativefeet.com. And you would use the invisible thread in the bobbin. You can also use it in the needle as well for this technique. However, the bobbin is the most important for it to be invisible when we're done because we're gonna sew upside down. I haven't done it with a double needle in years because my eyesight got worse and I started taking too long to thread double needles. It shows people would go, I'll come back later. <laughs> You used it on a jacket for narrow binding. I'll tell you what, I really wanna show you, ah, I was gonna put the bobbin in the wrong place, even though I have this right here. I have this tube fabric here. 
I should have done that with stretch fabric or stretch needle. Where is it? Here we go. And they call this a braid. Braid ribbon. And it has a tremendous amount of stretch to it, which if you're using a double needle, the double needle is the stretchiest of all the stitches you can sew on your machine because the two threads share that one bobbin and that bobbin is a zigzag stitch on the back. So it allows you to stretch it all the way out without your threads breaking. That's partly why I prefer it to, you know, anything else when hemming a t-shirt because it's super strong and you can stretch your t-shirt when you're having a larger hip size day than, than you had yesterday. So I wanted to play with this because I bought it years ago and never tried it. So we'll do that together as well. What is on your sewing table this week, you guys? Is it a pile like I have right here? <laughs> this is not much better than right before I went live. Because I took so many pictures. I took about 1,500 pictures in one day doing all kinds of trims and that requires trims being out and then I have to put them away. So I put them away just to bring them back out again. You've seen me use ribbon and sewing with decorative stitches. Now you've seen me use a double needle on certain things. I, I need to not forget to do the ribbon. So you guys monitor me and I want to show you how we can also use the double needle. So Rick Rack on as well. Okay, beads. <laughs> My brain doesn't want to put these col this color down. So I'm going to see how this looks. We may have to go to invisible thread in the needles as well, which is what I use. That's what I teach in my book. If you don't have my book, well, it's the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook, and it's not something to be read. It's something to be used. Before you actually go and do this on fabric, because what we're going to do is we're going to hide the beads beneath the fabric, and your double needle is going to sew on either side of those beads that could definitely break your needle. Are any of you nervous? So what we want to do is we always want to put the beads beneath that and make sure that the needle is going to clear both sides of the pearl. Then you know that you're good to go on sewing with it. If your needle did not clear, there's a washer on the pearls and piping foot. You slide the washer to the other side and it moves the bead location for you so you don't have to move the double needle. Get under there. Where is it? I need to move the microphone. Are, it's kind of intimidating because you, you can't see the thing you're sewing on. What you're watching is the line that you drew. And it took me, just so you know, it took me, I think it was 15 years before I did a curve. I just kept going straight lines because I was nervous to, to actually sew in a curve for risk of breaking a needle with those beads underneath. And then once I did it, I was like, straight lines? Who needs straight lines? We can sew curvy. Still scared even though I already tested it because I can't see, just as you might be. So always comfort yourself by doing it with your hand wheel for the first stitch. Always make sure you got your thread held secure before you start. And I need to check my settings. I got a shorter stitch length. That's fine. Tension's at three. Tension is going to affect how tight these threads are, not the bobbin. The bobbin may be too tight. If it's too tight, it pulls together. We'll see how this looks. We won't know until we stitch. So you can see I did a curve. I 
and now your beads are in the fabric instead of on the fabric. And what that does for you is it makes it so you can sew beads on infant wear and not hurt the child with the invisible thread in the, in the needles as well that you just have this beautiful little hint of beads beneath. But you can even take it further. Because of the way I engineered this foot, the spacing of the two sides of the tunnel are mathematically equal to be to enabling you to do some really fun things with this. I gotta think for a minute. I haven't done this in a long time. Yeah, okay. I may not be right. There's so many things you can do. There's thousands of things, variations of things you can do with the creative feet. Endless. You just have to open up the package, turn on the sewing machine, and turn on the bravery. Talk yourself out of being nervous. Even if it takes going in the bathroom and having a conversation with yourself, looking in the mirror and saying, I can do this. I am not afraid. Now, when you push toward the foot, the beads are firm and the foot can't go up and over them. So you just push toward the foot and it's going to ensure that your spacing is the same all the way down. So you only had to draw one line. And this hand is just keeping the fabric from getting caught, caught on the rough edges of the of the pearls. I'm not stretching the fabric, just very light. Hold on it. Wendy, you're bridal and formal Welsh seamstress. Oh, you're probably going, oh my goodness. There's so much you can do with our stuff. In fact, I'm the inventor of a lot of the bridal techniques used today. See how neat. Okay, so I definitely didn't do what I was thinking. Okay, so I have to do this. All right. Okay, so this is a technique, Wendy. We had, um, we did a show in Vegas and as you can imagine, all the, all of the costume designers there were super excited the first year they ever were introduced to our products because you couldn't sew beads on without hand sewing them on or gluing them on or using fabric paint and sticking them in the paint until I invented this foot. So, um, first time you could just sew and your trim just automatically just follows along with the hand motion of your hand. And, uh, I developed this technique, which is much prettier with a high fashion fabric like lame and, uh, and you alternate beads, but in between every bead, you flip it over and you do a cording. You can also use elastic thread. And what it does is it creates a stretch in the garment without having the fabric be stretchy. And so I'm going to kind of show you, um, how it's done. And I have this good sizable piece of fabric somewhere where I have it all done. But I don't know where it is right now. 33 years of little samples all over the place. Okay, so how to get the stretchy effect is now instead of sewing another row bead, I am now with the, is this what I'm doing? I can't remember. Okay, so basically, if you end it, you can see how the fabric is taken in about eighth of an inch here, and over here the fabric is flat. So if you do lots of rows of this, what you're doing is you're cinching it up and making it tighter, and then still have the fabric be flat. The more rows you sew, the more the fabric wants to come in, and it creates this kind of stretch or movement in in the fabric. I hope that makes some sense. We can alternate now and do a cord. 
take the cording and put it beneath. And some of these things can be achieved with a zigzag stitch and some cannot. So I have not shown this in so long because my eyes. Come on, Claire. Get over there. Everything's easier when you don't have a microphone and lights in front of you. This machine sounds funny to me. It sounds like a bench or like a wooden slat in the floor. Remember we're using both threads. One thread goes through the guide up here and one thread is bypassed. I like the left needle to be behind that last thread guide and the right one to come down directly. In your instruction manual, it may actually say to separate your needle threads at the tension disc. And it's insanity because there isn't two, two tension setups up there. In the beginning, when the double needle first came out, the sewing machine manufacturers were trying to figure out how to get the sewing machine to, to actually handle two threads and have, you know, no problem. And one thing that they can count on is that if something goes wrong, we are more likely to blame it on ourselves than to blame it on the sewing machine. So if they created this little magical place in your machine where you put your thread outside of the tension and off to the side, that somehow that magically is going to work and it doesn't. So the separation right above the needle solved the problem and put the threads both through the same tension and having them be together all the way down until just above the needle is was the magic to it. But the other problem that sewing machines continue to have is that they have two thread posts and the, and the thread posts, one would be further away than the other. And as that take up lever in the front of your machine goes up and down and it pulls, it has to pull the weight of the spool. The inertia is, is increased at the beginning of the stroke. And then as it comes down, it starts to spin. So the tension was just too erratic. And that's why stacking two bobbins on the same post will give you more consistency than using any other method for delivering the thread to your sewing machine. I'm getting really teachy. All right, back to the fun stuff. Now I'm doing the same thing I did before, but now I have a cord and I have it upside down. And I got to keep in mind that this is the right side of the fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. So we're going to alternate. And this is the corded pin tuck. This is what we got to get this kitty cat. And this was done, as I mentioned earlier, by one of my customers, not by me. She made it for her granddaughter and then gave it to me when the granddaughter was no longer wanting it. So that's how it was done by having the cording be beneath. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip it over again. And isn't that beautiful as well? Another way of, uh, oh, this is what I was trying to remember to say. So if you've ever been told to do a dart in a garment, the purpose of a dart is to take something that is, that needs to be, needs to be wider at the hip line, for instance, and brought in into the waist. We can also experience that in the bust line where you need it, where the fullness is, but you want the fabric to be brought in to areas where, or to, to kind of carve into the fabrics, but especially when you do draping and they have you do darts to kind of pull in the bulk of the fabric so that you still have the, the size that you need in the larger areas. So you can use this technique as a dart replacement and set rhinestones into your fabric instead of doing a boring dart. You can carve into it with beads, rhinestone, chain, cord, and uh, it takes in an eighth of an inch of the fabric for every row that you sew. If you've ever bought a garment and it was too big on the shoulder and was falling off on the shoulder, where you can take in the 
distance between your neck and the shoulder by doing rows of rhinestones in the fabric, like I said, upside down. And then you'll just have hints of beautiful rhinestone accents on the shoulder. Isn't this a fun day? I love double needlework. I just uh, don't like threading the needles. <laughs> so now I'm going to do another row of beads beneath there to kind of show you what we get to. And then I'm going to show some of the sequins and ribbon foot with a double needle. And we're, we still have 45 minutes. I just have to pick my dad up at five. So I can run a little bit late, although I have to feed the dogs. And... Cannot forget, gotta bring the daddy. He's the man of the day. My veteran father from the Korean War. He was in the Army Corps of Engineers. In case you're wondering where I get my engineering abilities, it's uh, kind of a genetic thing in our family. I wish you could see this better. Let's see. I don't know. Every time I move the machine, I usually regret it. It's hard for you to see over the little mountains of the bees. I'm basically doing another row of beads. So if you alternate and you have one on top, one on bottom, one on top, one on bottom, it increases the stretch in the nature of the fabric or of the garment that you're sewing it with. Inlaid beading. This would have saved my daughter Jen when she was getting her first commune or her her baptism. That's, I invented the foot before she was born. She's now 30, she's as old as my company. So company's 33, she's about to turn 33. All right, so you can see here how we have a pipe. Oh, let's cut that. So we have, if I had altered and had this in between each one, or you can have this be beads. It's expensive though, why waste it? So having a cording be the middle. But it increases the amount of flexibility in the area where you taper or carve into the garment. The satin edge foot. Um, Amy, the satin edge foot will give you, make it easier to do a dart. The problem with darts is that mathematically, they generally are closer together at the top and wider at the bottom and, and generally across the bias to increase the spread of the fabric. And so a lot of people fail at it. One of the things that makes darts easier is the liquid based glue. So you fold your fabric and glue the dart in there the way that you want it. And then you can stitch it and it won't it won't stretch as you go ahead and sew that. But you don't have to use rhinestones to do those darts. And remember, it just kind of brings the fabric together. Remember the first pin tuck that I did. So this is done without anything in the fabric. See how it brought the fabric together? So you can carve with that as well. The problem is you just want to make sure you tie that securely at the end. Maybe if you sewed it upside down, this is be in your fabric and this would be the outside of your of your garment. And then you could actually also take and flatten that out and do a top stitch over it. But the whole point of it is to just have a seam like that. Does that make sense? So yes, you can use it for darts, but you must really secure the the tails at the end. Otherwise, this will just start to come undone. Oh, okay. I want to try this. See how it's, it's like, it, this is a sweater type of material. And I don't know where I got it. Made in Germany. This may be as old as the Glennon sewing machine, which was the sewing machine before they came out with the machine called the embellisher. 
my dad and I were involved in the development of that machine. That company, I don't think they continued. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> okay, there we go. So the sequins and ribbon foot comes with a quarter inch opening in the guide. And you also have the ability to acquire. It's up to you. Oh, come on. Where's the other ones? A five or a three eighths inch guide. So I was just photographing these. Here we go. So these are the different <laughs> openings opening options that you have for different widths of braid, ribbon, lace, rickrack, upholstery braids like this and this. And when we use a double needle, we'll be sewing on both sides at once instead of having to sew one side and then the other. It in essence turns your home sewing machine into a double needle machine. The only difference is that on a double needle industrial machine, they actually have two bobbins, one for each needle. And uh, if you have an industrial double needle machine, we have fit your ankle onto our foot so that you can use our foot for sewing ribbon because it works so much better than any of the adapters that they've adapted for ribbon. All right, so I've never used this one before. And I think we can use it to, to actually gather fabric at the same time as sewing it on. Hi, Cindy West. Welcome to today's episode of Fabricly Speaking Live. All right. And you can see I, I can't get that in there because it is too wide. So I might think, let's see, then we should use the 5 8 inch or 3 8 inch. I don't know why I got 5 8 inch stuck in my head. I could feed that in to there. However, when this flexes and becomes taut, it, it shrinks down to a quarter inch. Another time we have a similar experience is when we're sewing rickrack. So your brain will think this is 3 8 inch wide and we should use a 3 8 inch guide. Oh, I keep unthreading that needle. <laughs> so if you take that through, sure enough, it will go through and it'll feed through straight. And you're and you and you'll be going, that's great. That's that's the right size for that rickrack, but it's not. We want to put this through the quarter inch guide. Well, you see how it's hard to get it to go through there because of its width. So we just take the rickrack and trim off the little bumps for just about an inch and a half so that you can insert it into the tube and then pull it through. And then it zigzags or slithers through like a snake going through a tunnel. Except for it's not a tunnel, is it? It's a it's a tube. So the trim becomes completely surrounded on all sides. This is what's different between our foot and these feet they came out with for free motion called couching feet. And our sequin and ribbon has always outperformed couching feet and being the first couching foot because this foot I invented when I was, I invented the satin edge foot when I was 19, the pearls and piping foot when I was 20 and the sequin ribbon foot when I was 21 sequentially one year after the other and that had to do with when they came out with trim when they when they came out with this this is the invention of plastic made this possible and this heat set on a string these little plastic beads sometimes they're really nice and smooth and sometimes they're rough well, the rough ones are not your friend you should try to find really nice feeling ones and you'll find them in the bridal section of your fabric store now that i i really want to bring you some trims but i 
There's just so much to bring you. The Omni Stitch machine. Omni Stitch, Omni Stitch. I think that's what, yeah, that, the Omni Stitch was what they changed the name from the Glennon machine. It became the Omni Stitch machine. Do you have an Omni Stitch? And the needle hits a metal, like, finger, and it's violent. Uh, super scary. <laughs> and so because your needle is hitting something metal, well, it's destroying the needle, and it's damaging the fabric, and it's eventually the needle bar would move up, and we had to teach people how to bring their needle bar down and adjust the machine in order to use it. It was a flawed uh, design. A cool idea, but a flawed design. The sequence and ribbon foot 3 8 inch guide is the one you use for the jumbo rickrack. So if you've wanted to sew jumbo rickrack, you can. Let's see what else I can show you with this. Well, I put the rickrack in, so we'll start with rickrack. I had this fabric ready. I'll just sew on this. This would be a time you want to stabilize your fabric. What? Somebody just texted me something. What the heck is that? Oh. It was a different reservation. It's a different restaurant, so. Okay, you didn't need to know that. Now, this needle's too big for this rickrack, so I don't know what it's going to look like. I usually use a 3.0 spacing. I have a 4.0 spacing. So we'll see how important it is. So you'll see that the rickrack is going to go through the guide the way that it is shaped. And because we're using two needles, sewing both sides of it down at the same time, it is not actually, the stitching isn't actually going all the way out to the point and coming all the way out to that point. It is sewing down the center of it. But it also allows you to come around. And it, it holds it flat. And not only does it hold it flat while you're sewing, it holds it flat after it's been washed and worn. It, you can't get the rickrack to flip up on you, which you don't want. So if you've ever sewn rickrack before and all the edges ended up curling up, well, it's just because you didn't use our foot because the sequin ribbon foot is the only foot that allows the trim to not be stretched or distorted as it's being stitched down. Isn't that awesome? So you can do circles. And a lot of people think we drop our feed dogs when I use this foot, or I drop my feed dogs. <laughs> Making myself into more than one person here. But uh, it's just the design of the bottom of this foot. The design of the bottom of this foot makes it really, really fun for couching. And it also is the unique quality that makes it hold elastic for you. So while it's super easy to move for this, it's super hard to, to to stop your elastic from stretching. I mean, it's just the marriage of two of the most frustrating things you'll ever experience in sewing solved with one foot. All right. See how nice and flat that's laying? And that's with white thread. If you use an invisible thread, you wouldn't see it at all. It'll just be magically down like that. So we're going to try this stuff now. And this is significantly wider than that opening. And this I'm not going to use on that. I'm going to use it on a single layer of fabric because I want to see if it if we can use it to gather. Hello, Ellen from Pittsburgh. We are starting at 2 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, and we never change our clock. So that is why it appears we have done something different. So a piece of thread. 
and then you lay the braid over the thread. Take these two, <laughs> it's better if you don't pull it through the needle because the thread gets curly like ribbon at Christmas. Oh, there's so much I can teach you guys. <laughs> there we go. And then you just pull on that thread and it takes that through. And that's how you get larger objects through the tube. You're dealing with your daughter and your new grandson dealing with it you have a new grandson congratulations i don't have any of those my sister i think she's i think she has 10 or 12 grandkids i don't have any yet my kids well they're not in any hurry to have babies of course i'm the youngest of six kids so i i should be the last one with grandkids And I'm not jealous, I'm not jealous, because it's not my choice. It's not up to me when my kids have kids. I'm trying to be a good person and not, not be jealous. Do I sound not jealous? So now I have my double needle on again. So we're gonna be sewing down both sides of this at the same time. I'm gonna increase stitch length because this is pretty thick and fluffy and decrease the pressure on the presser foot, which is already down because of what we were doing before. Remember, we're using a double needle, so you can't move it to check needle position, but the guide on the, the sequin ribbon foot is engineered to adjust left and right of center, which means you have full range to center your needles on whatever trim you wanna sew with a double needle by simply turning the nut and that moves the guide. So you would always want to test this first on some fabric before you just go for it so that you're not adjusting on your final project. And I'm off-centered and have the microphone and the light in front of me. What am I doing wrong? I was turning it the wrong way. <laughs> okay, remember, this is my first time using this. And this is, this could be... See, we were, we were playing around with the Glennon, which was ended up being called the Omni Stitch Machine. That was, I was still in California. So in the 90s, that's how old this, this trim is. So I'm not touching the trim right now to see how it behaves. Okay. Sometimes I use the satin edge foot base with the, created, with the sequin ribbon guides. So this is stretch fabric, in essence, being sewn on regular. Oh, that really, just look at that. What a neat finish. Hi, Jessica, you're not late. Just know that I am in Arizona and we don't change our clocks. So whatever time you were used to watching me, we are now an hour difference, and I can't tell you if I'm before or after because everything has changed. So now I'm going to stretch as I sew. And I'm increasing my st stitch length to five. And it's too big of a needle because now when I stretch it, it's actually shrinking down to a, what I would need a 3.0 spacing. So I'm just, I'm adding a little bit of grab not not full stretch to try to keep it from being too small for the double needle just a little stretch because this i think could be used for easing oh look at sewing it in <gasps> look at that <laughs> i love trying new things oh my goodness so i'm sewing in That's why costume designers love our feet. They're like, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. So because I sewed in, it folded it over and it became 
like a piping, but it's not. It's just this braid. This stuff's really neat. Oh, so cool. Then you can take the pearls and piping foot and actually stitch that down. I'm going to be wanting to play around with this more. I believe one of my suppliers still carries this, this kind of stuff. What's left? What's left? I was going to sew some ribbon. What else do we use a double needle for? So we're definitely not making a zipper pouch because I didn't make anything. I was just making a mess. I was going to show you how you can do the corded pin tuck on a, a white fabric. And you can get the rat tail cording in lots of colors. And you can also get it in 16th inch and 8th inch. And if you put it under like a white cotton batiste really sheer fabric, then what happens is you see the color come through like a shadow applique effect through the fabric. It's really quite stunning. So if you want to add kind of a hint of purple to a white, section of fabric you can sew with the cording on the bottom. Should I show you? I think I have some sheer fabric. I have some men's shirting fabric. That's not it. This is, that's high quality cotton for quilting. It's a little thicker than I would recommend. There's some stickiness on this ribbon. We don't ever want to use the sticky part through the foot. It'll stick to the fabric. I wish they didn't put tape on it because you've got to kind of waste that much ribbon because it's sticky in two places. Hello, Julie. I'm sorry, Judy <laughs> from Saddlebrook. What? Saddlebrook what? You guys want me to show you? I'm just trying to remember where I put the shirting fabric. I do a little ribbon. I was going to do this on wedding veil. This is actually a wedding veil though. I'm going to walk away for a minute. So this is one of my wedding veils and it has fishing line on the edge and I'm the inventor of the fishing line edge. It didn't exist until I came up with it long long time ago and uh, and then we also did it with the serger with the satin edge foot does a beautiful job with the fishing line and it creates this flowing lettucey effect that's when I was located in Los Angeles and I worked with the designers and my father as well my dad made big assemblies for industrial sewing machines and then we worked to help create techniques that when trims, different things came out, designers were like, this is really neat, but I don't want to have to hand sew it. If I design whatever I want, that's all good and well, but a manufacturer has to be able to duplicate what the designers come up with and they can't end up selling a $13,000 dress because it takes somebody that many hours to hand sew that on. So that's what my father and my role was in uh, the beginning of all these different trims that came out was to figure out ways to make it so you could have a manufacturer do that. And uh, so he did it for industrial sewing machines and then I carried it on with the domestic industry. And that's a little history about us. I'm going to give you this to look at while I get the shirting fabric. And there was one other thing I said. Oh, and wedding veil fabric. Because I've been wanting to put ribbon on wedding veil for a while and show you guys how it looks. And I have... This, for those of you who weren't watching this,
It's nice to leave you with a little music instead of total silence. I hope you guys are enjoying that. I have figured out how to do that without crashing the whole show. <laughs> well, I don't know about these color combinations, but I did this on a sample years ago and it got stolen at a show. Somebody liked it too much to leave it with me. So, uh, didn't take me long at all to find the shirting fabric. So this is a polyester cotton for uh, making like men's dress shirts. And it's what I recommend for the lining fabric of masks because it doesn't have too much cotton, which has cellulose, which feeds bacteria. So if you're interested in learning more about making masks so that they're the healthiest possible for you, I do have videos on how to do that in my YouTube channel. You can search mask inside of my channel to find that quicker. But we're not making a mask today. We're having some fun. And this is done with a double needle. And you can actually take this fabric and have another fabric below. So you're sandwiching it together and doing it inside of two layers of fabric which I believe is what I ended up doing. What are they thumbs upping for? I don't know. <laughs> Too long. Oh, I know what I'm doing now. So you didn't miss it, Amy. I got to take this thing down because the music and that message, I'll be right back, will be there if I don't do that now. I did it. Okay, so pearls and piping is the foot we're going to use for that. But I have, I have this and the sequins and ribbon foot. I'm going to do the ribbon first. I have some beautiful ribbon, bridal ribbon. However, it's not over here and I'm not going to stop again. I try to only go two hours and we're coming up on the two hour mark. If you just joined us and are like, wait a minute. That's no way you've been on two hours because I just got here. It's because you didn't know that it was the wrong time zone. We don't change time. So when you changed your clock, we did not change ours. So if you're watching right now, it's 11, 11 of 2021. It is right now 348 in Arizona. So the sequence of ribbon foot comes with a quarter inch guide. I'm going to put a quarter inch ribbon in and I'm going to sew it on the edge of this wedding veil to kind of show you what you can do on a wedding veil. And then we will move off. And this would be the only way I would sew it on a wedding veil, by the way, with invisible thread in the needles and the bobbin. Or you could, if you're using white ribbon, you could use the lingerie thread in the needles and in the bobbin. Where's the end? There it is. So we have a single layer of bridal veil material. Tool is what it's called. How is bridal ribbon different? Ugh. See, now I got to go get it. I will go grab it because I, I know where it is. I actually had it right next to me. I'm starting to disappear into the pile. <laughs> this is what it's like to see me at a show. Let's see. I was going to do a bridal episode, but it wasn't going to be today. This is one of my bridal projects and this was embroidered using the octi hoops so if you see this this is a video on my youtube channel isn't it pretty and you can actually write the, the bride's name and write the groom's name and then you put the champagne flutes there for a photo op on their wedding day it's one of my most proud projects that i came up with 
So this would be a bridal ribbon. You can see it's white and it has this little hint of metallic on the edges and they make it bigger as well. And it is a high quality, it's more supple, it's softer, so it flows better with a wedding reel. I don't have the right needle size on for either one of these. So I'm going to just not sew these, but know that that's bridal ribbon. And this would be a really pretty bridal rat tail. It has metallic running through it as well. The lingerie thread is completely different and unique to the Invisifil polyester thread as it's nylon. This is something that I did for making a headdress and you can see this is bridal tulle and beads and I sewed it with the pearls and piping foot together, just pulled it through and it created this trim. I believe this is a quick clip in the quick clips playlist on my YouTube channel. So this is stuff that I acquired for an episode on It's So Easy. So if you look inside of the, if you're on my channel and you have the search bar above my channel, that searches all of YouTube. Then you have another search bar below the header on my channel and that's where you would type wedding veil and then you'll see all the episodes that I've done on wedding veils and one was an episode on it's so easy and that's what this was from when I did their show I shipped this there and I had all the goodies that I needed for the episode in this little Tupperware and I highly recommend getting some of these I got these from uh, Costco So when you're getting ready to work on a project, if all of your stuff is in here, something kept popping out on one of the other sides. If you have all of your stuff inside of here for that project and you decide you're going to work on something else and you need to put it all away while you have it all in one spot and you can be organized when you're ready to do it, you pull it out and now you bring it all. This is how we handle going on a television show and having six appearances in one day. I would send six of these out with six different episodes and six different clothing changes. And so you would think that I went to that show six times, but I actually showed up one day, filmed six, six episodes all in one day. So that's that. And We're going to do the regular ribbon that you would buy in the store because I have the, actually this, this needle is too big for that. It's too big for that and too small for the other. Here's one. This is the right size. And it's all based on the spacing of the double needles. If your needle's not wide enough, well, then you can get ruffles on the edge of your ribbon. If it's too skinny, that's what I'm talking about. So if the needles come too close together, then the outside edges of your ribbon will ruffle. And if they're, if the needle's too wide, well, you're going to miss the ribbon on one side and it's disastrous. You'll have to rip everything out and start over. So I have a 4.0 twin needle spacing on the machine right now. That's four millimeters spacing between the center of the needles. So you have a, a hole that the needle creates and they measure halfway between the hole. If you were to take the needle and sew through a piece of paper with it, or I hate to put my needle through paper, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So you learn better. A lot of times they give you a junky needle in the kit when you buy your machine. Oh, well. Okay, so how you determine the spacing. This is a day on double needles, Cindy. If you don't let me forget, I'll sew some pearls on the edge of the wedding veil before we're over, but that is not done with a double needle. I'm trying to keep myself on point because I have to... We have a dinner with my daddy. It's Veterans Day. He's a veteran, so. We 
Where's a piece of paper? That's what I'm looking for. So a needle, when you poke it, they actually measure halfway between the two holes, and that is a four millimeter spacing. This is a three millimeter needle. This one is four. So I'm just gonna change it so I can do the pink ribbon. I need to put this back in its case. Where's that one? And then there's the different size needle overall as well. Oh, I was gonna try to free motion with double needles today. And it is really kind of cool what you can do. Oh, and, and oh, there's so much to teach you. A really, really neat thing to do, especially for the inlaid beading that I showed earlier. Where is that piece of fabric? I don't know where the inlaid beading went. Okay, so on the inlaid beading, if you want to do costume, instead of having the thread not show up, you do one color metallic in this, one a different color metallic here, and a different color metallic in the bobbin. So three different colors of metallic thread, and you sew the beads upside down, and then they, they interlace with the beads and create this incredible look. Like I said, I could keep, I could just sit here all day and never stop and be at the end of next week and still have not repeated anything. That's why you can see some of my videos have gone as far as six hours long. I'm not going to bore you while you watch me thread this needle. I unintentionally unthreaded it. I'm getting my little handy threader out. I think it's interesting that my six, six and a half hour video has no thumbs down. There we go. There we go. I say there we go all the time now. At least I stopped singing the, uh, the chicken dance once you guys told me that's what I was singing. <laughs> Although I did do that today for a minute. And those of you who've been watching since the show started, not today's show, but the entire series of Fabrically Speaking Live episodes, you know that I would do this da 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 da, -da thing. <laughs> and uh, thanks to you, I figured out it was a chicken dance. I have no idea why that got stuck in my head. There. That's going to be my last time changing the needle today because it takes too long. And right now there's invisible thread in the bobbin. But you could also use the lingerie thread. As I was mentioning, the lingerie thread is a nylon thread and it's a fiber. It's super soft and, and flowy. It's, it's ideal for bridal sewing and lace sewing. As it also is stretchy, so it, uh, it won't break, especially on bridal. Like if, you, if you've ever buttoned a bride up in her dress you know that that fabric experience is a tremendous burden where you have to cinch it up on on their bodice as well as if you're getting into steampunk stuff and making corsets the lingerie thread is ideal for strength and it also has a quality to it called translucency which makes it reflect the color that's up against it so white Lingerie thread is really yellow, pink, lavender, ivory, beige, just white because it reflects the color it's next to. It's like a little mirror, but it is soft, unlike the, well, even the nylon monofilament thread is soft, but the lingerie thread is more drapey. It's, it's beautiful. And we have it at creativefeet.com. I recommend it all through my book and video. So uh, if you have not yet tried it you definitely want to get it because I talk about it and you'll be like shoot she keeps telling me to use this thread I don't have and it in one full bobbin of the nylon lingerie thread is the equivalent of winding like 80 bobbins of 40 weight thread so 
It's great for in the bobbin for machine embroidery, monogramming, applique, all of your decorative stitches. Anytime you don't want your bobbin thread to come up to the top, lingerie thread in the bobbin pulls the needle thread down and, and it increases tension without you physically having to turn the screw on your bobbin tension. All right, enough of talking. <laughs> Never enough talking. So much to learn. Yes, my uh, live show, I was talking to my somebody yesterday. Had to be, I talked to so many people yesterday. I was like, they used to sit all day in my booth. All day. <laughs> I'll never forget this one customer, uh, Arlington. And she emailed me or called me, because it may have been that long ago, the email didn't even exist. I think she called. And she said, she asked permission to bring her own chair and because she wanted to stay all day. And I said, well, sure, you could stay all day if you like. And she stayed all day, all three days. And it was thanks to her that I came out with the video because I already had my book out and I was wondering why she felt the need to sit there. And she kept saying, I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual learner. And uh, well, we all are, if you have eyes, you are a visual learner. So the video helps as why you would rather not watch me talk, but rather see what I'm showing you. I have the ribbon in there. I have the needles centered, two needles sewing on both sides of the ribbon at once. Now this would normally cause the fabric to pucker. And that's because you generally have to hold ribbon and guide it, but the foot guides it for you. So you can just get it out of your way and guide just your wedding veil fabric. And I shouldn't have put my hand back there because then I just threw everything off. You want to center, there we go. Wedding veil tool is what it's called, is generally a fabric I will, I will kind of pull from behind the foot. And the reason is, is that it slips on the feed dogs. I have the, that's what's going wrong. I have the stitch length set way too long. So we want a regular stitch length of two and a half millimeter stitch length. Notice I'm not guiding the ribbon. I'm guiding, I'm pulling on the ribbon from behind though. Not the, not the tool. And up front, I'm just kind of barely, barely touching it to keep it from, uh, from moving in this direction. The tool is the hardest part of the whole thing to see it. So I usually recommend you get a post-it note. Oopsie, I thought I hit the button. Oh, I just tore my pattern from last week. So if you have a post-it note and you just stick it underneath here and have it stuck to your machine, then you can see the tool over the ribbon. I mean, over the paper. Of course, my machine is painted blue and it makes it show up. But if your machine is white and you have white wedding veil fabric on there, you can't see it. So that's one of the reasons I love having my machines painted. This is usually the position I would be in. And then you'd have the white lingerie thread, the white lingerie thread in the bobbin and the needles. It says both sides of the ribbon. At the same time, you won't see anything at all because everything is white and you have magically ribbon on the edge of your veil. And this is when it was invented because of my foot. Anything I could sew on the edge of wedding veils when I created these feet, well, I just went, I just tried everything I could. And then the overlock machine as well. So anything they came out with, I tried to figure out how to sew it on both of those. I'm not going to do beads right now because I have a double needle on and I was going to do one more thing. Oh, try to quilt or use, oh, I need to have another thread in the needle. So I'm going to, I'm going to change my bobbins. And this is what I've been sewing from this whole time, these two bobbins. So I want to have color now. And you can see this is the deco bobs. So all the sewing I did, can you tell there's any thread removed from those bobbins? 
And that's because this is 80 weight thread, so it lasts a long time. Why am I, why do I keep hitting the wrong thing? Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have this on my leg. How much time? What time is it? It's four. I have to be at my dad's house in an hour. I'm okay for a little bit more. I, I can't not show you the pearls and piping foot thing. Darn, I wish I thought before I changed the thread. It's all right. I'm going to switch to 40 weight thread in the bobbins, which I'm using as needle thread. Because if you're doing free motion, you want to see the stitch. So we, uh, I'm not going to wind that while you wait. I'll do that another time. I don't like doing my bad habits. So I'm going to use two different color threads because it's fun. And I know this is not one of the colors from the Deco Bob series. So that has to be, and it's thick, so it's 40 weight. And this is another 40 weight for sure. And I'm not putting them in the machine. I'm putting them, I'm using these as my needle threads. Making sure they're both unwrapping off the spool the same direction before I put them on this post. And then take it to the machine, holding them together so they can't slip. If I release a little to continue threading, I release them both, then I hold them both. And the last place is where you separate them right above the needle. You have one go through the the last thread guide and one going in front of the last thread guide. That's what you see right here. That goes behind. This one's just going to go straight down to the eye of the right needle. And I don't want monofilament thread in the bobbin for this. This time I want to use a lighter weight bobbin like the Deco Bob or even the Invisifil. And why wouldn't I use lingerie? Because lingerie increases tension in the bobbin. I want my bobbin tension to be easy and relaxed as these threads are thicker. And I want these to be accentuated without getting too much pull from below. Scientifically, it's better. If I explain everything about how the sewing machine works, it would take too many hours. Hey, hey, look at that. I threaded it. Oh, I love it when someone, when, it's because it's neon. I can see it really well. So let me look back here. The lingerie thread is lighter weight than the 100 weight polyester, but it's different. So this is, 80 weight. This is not as fine as 100 weight. I'm only going to show this if I can find a... I have too much clutter. I thought I had a lingerie spool out, but I, I don't. I organized myself. What was I going to do? Oh, quilt. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I was just going to quilt. And it's just finding something to quilt on. And while I have tons of quilt squares from the shows that are not done, just where is it? I had a purple one with polka dots. I still got to finish this pattern and then teach you this. This uses all three of the creative feet and the octi hoops together. And it's so fun. This 
this is covered in lint. No, I'm not going to use that. My finger bow. Why did I let her go? All right, I'm going to step away for a second. Because I think I know where I have the stack. It's about half, it's about this thick, this many layers of quilt squares that I started at a show and they're not suitable for being made into a quilt. So I'll be right back. Is this pile getting big? I gotta turn off that music. This is just a little bit of it. Okay, so. This one was the first time I quilted four layers of batting. And that is in my YouTube channel as well. I gotta let my sister know that I'm live right now. She just tried to call. All right, she knows now. <laughs> Okie dokie. So I'm just trying to find a fabric. Oh, look, there's that tiger fabric I used. Oh, by the way, I sent my son his present. He was complaining about his, his lower back. So I made him a bolster and I used the, I used the tiger fabric on the ends of the bolster and I made it really firm so he can put it on his lower back. I don't think he's received it yet. I don't know if this is going to show up on there. It is. A s she needs my sister's address. Copy. Okay, I think that it'll show up nicely on this purple. I know y'all appreciate the purple. Wow. Ooh, this one's fun too. <laughs> 
I got to clear some of this away or I won't be able to even sew. This was what I would do at a show. This is one of the samples. And you can see how I am able to crisscross over and add different colors. And there's never a pucker at all. And that's the Octi Hoops. The Octi Hoops eliminate the chance of puckering. So there's no way I can sew with all of this here. And this is, ugh, I do not like doing this at all. I didn't do this, so I'll save this. I already showed you how to do the corded pin tuck. So what I'll do is I will save this for maybe next week's project. I'll use that technique so that you're not disappointed in me for not showing it. But meanwhile, you should get yourself some of this. You can buy it relatively inexpensive. They sell it on little individual spools as well. I... I buy from like, I go to New York and go to the garment district and buy from wholesalers there. That's why I have so much. And I can buy it wholesale and sell it to you guys, except for it comes in these giant spools. Then we have to, you don't want to buy that much. So we have to like unwrap it and then wind it on something and then package it. And it's just, it's why we haven't done it yet. It's too much work to get it to the point where you'd want to buy it. Joanne's does that. Hobby Lobby. Michael's. You just got to look with new eyes. Because a lot of times you go through those stores and you don't really look at things that you don't think you could sew. And then once you know that you have the ability to sew something, well then suddenly you might, you'll see it in the store. And it was always there. You just didn't see it. A lot of times they're on these cards like this and they have all kinds of different trims like this down certain aisles. You will rarely see one like this unless it's in the upholstery department. And you may have gone through the upholstery department and just went because you didn't think you could sew that on that stuff on either. Ah, just. Okay, I think the pile's low enough. Now that the sisters are starting to text, I, I feel the pressure of not allowing myself to go past because I did tell them my show is two hours long. And, and I still want to do the fabric thingy. So next week, oh, there's somebody, somebody brought up a question. And it's something I really want to do. There's a product called the Pouncer. And there's this chalk. And you use templates. And, and you pounce. And the chalk goes on the fabric in the shape of the template. And the problem with it is that the line is too big. So you don't know where to put your needle. So I didn't like it. I was very disappointed. And I have all these stencils that I bought from them. And the chalk. And I like the idea. But I just... Could never recommend you guys to use it. And she she bought it, and she also didn't like what was going on. She didn't get why she was having trouble using or sewing. And the reason is, is your needle is only like 16th of an inch, a tiny little tip of that needle, and the line was eighth of an inch wide. So it's way too big of a line, and your, your needle travels, and you end up with a not, not a perfect stitch. So... I don't want to not use them and you may have templates at home and chalk and I'm thinking we could use them to ink or paint on our fabric by go ahead do the chalk then we have the outline and we can ink our own fabric using those templates and then sew in an artistic way doesn't matter if your needle travels if you're being artsy okay Goodness gracious. There's my little elbow pad. I finished the other one too. This was my original design and it was much lower profile than this one. But it doesn't hurt to have more than one if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff like that. 
that was last week's lesson if you guys missed it okay double needle quilting generally i would not do it with a backing fabric but i also wanted to show you embroidery i'm going to take the foot off because we don't need the foot for doing free motion with the octi hoops screwdrivers how are you all today My one sister doesn't have a car and my brother doesn't know where my other sister lives and they're trying to find it and I can't say it out loud because I guess I could mute myself and tell yeah I can mute her well, maybe she'll be able to do it based on what I just typed All right, I don't know, I'm almost done. Now I just have to find the octi -hoops. And this is one of the ones I had ready for embroidery. I'm gonna do a little embroidery because that's really when you would wanna do this. Not so much for quilting as embroidery. However, once you ask me if we can quilt, to do it I'm going to show you show you why you don't want to do it with the backing so I'm tightening up this is our stick and tear stabilizer I usually explain the octa hoops better before I use them but I'm at the tail end of today so be sure to check through if you go to my actual channel by clicking on my face It'll take you to the actual channel and you subscribe there, but underneath the header, you'll see a search thing and you can click. There's also playlists. You go to the OctiHoop playlist and you'll understand what this hoop is all about and how the stabilizer works. And it has this little handle and you put it in and you can draw with your sewing machine on any fabric. So I'm just gonna take a piece of fabric and any old fabric and just stick it on there. And just kind of show you what happens when you embroider with a double needle. All right, where's my glasses? Where are my glasses? Are you still counting how many times I've said that this year, Amy? Because I was just joking when I said to do that, but I have a sneaking suspicion you might actually be counting straight stitch remember you you gotta not you gotta make sure your needle is not off to the side you want to make sure your needles are going to both clear the opening in your throat plate lower the foot if you don't you don't have tension on your threads when you pull on the threads you can see the needles flexing if they're not flexing the foot's up if the foot's up even though there's no foot you'll have looping on the bottom so basically, you're just kind of sewing with two threads. So you're getting two rows of stitching. It's not the best color fabric. So if you wanted to embroider going side to side, you're, you could do this to make petals on the flowers. And you can see I'm rotating the hoop. This is a technique that's a little bit more challenging than using a straight a single needle so basically it's it it's doing the center or the inside of the, the pedal and the light side's lighter 
But if you don't turn the hoop the right as you go around, then it, it'll look bad. So we can also use it like as a monogram. Doing two sides at the same time. This is a straight stitch because it's a double needle, see? So I can move my, my hands side to side to create a zigzag pattern. And we're covering more fabric with two colors at the same time. But I really like just the... Oopsie, my thread's shredding. It's because I sat there too long. I cut my thread. Am I going to get away with it? No. They got a, it acted a little weird for a minute there. So I'm going to try it on quilting really quick too. Kind of neat though, huh? And if you wanted to fill in an area really fast, you have two threads the same color. Well, you're just doing the the more volume all in once. But you have to rotate the hoop while doing your embroidery, which is harder than just using a single needle. So now I'm going to try quilting. In essence, you're going to see the same kind of thing. Two colors at the same time. We could use two of the same color. And I'm going to do a little bit without the back. And in this case, we use two of the hoops at once, one on the bottom. And then the smaller one on top. And this goes inside of the larger hoop that's beneath it. And you can lower your feed dogs. I didn't just because I just tend to forget a lot of times. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to be down with the octi hoops. Okay, they found the house. <laughs> so. All right, so free motion quilting with two, with a double needle. And uh, never done it before. So it's definitely be a little bit more challenging on the sewing machine. This would be when, if you're into calligraphy, this would be cool for people with the talent. I, I never really was good at calligraphy. Ooh, oh, that's cool. And I'm going slow because I'm learning. And this fabric's really, really old and kind of super flexible right now. I see, I kind of I like this. <laughs> there. Now I wish I had a lighter color in that left needle. Okay, so... This was a bonus. One of the threads is caught on something. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it sewed at all. That was really wrapped around something. Okay. So basically it's two, two straight stitches. It kind of looks like a mess up if, if you can get the camera angle just right, the lighting just right. It's, it's quite neat. And two at the same time and the back looks like that. So that's why you want to have your backing, put your backing on after, and then you can't tell that you used the double needle. But now I'm going to do a little with the backing just just so we can see even though I don't recommend it what's going on here is the thread got underneath that bobbin and it started to tie a knot so that one tension was all the way tight 
<laughs> something my fault. So I want to make sure they're behaving properly before I start again. This will be the last thing. If you have any questions, let me know. I don't even see because my sister's chat is up. Let's see. You're not counting? That's okay. I'm glad you're not. <laughs> okay. So that's why it wasn't behaving as nicely as I thought it should. It amazes me every time the thread's caught on something and it keeps sewing. Just shocking. Oh, that's... And this is what this is for. I already had a cramp in my back from not using it. So here we go. And here we go, and here we go. <laughs> it's a lot louder. It's interesting. Kind of neat. I might have to design something just for this purpose. Oh, you certainly cover a lot more space. All right, let's see what it looks like. But I want to do a little bit more without the back. Because it's fun. Don't give me something fun at 4.30. Oh, gosh, I really do have to stop. I'm just going to get a... I'm pulling the back away. Anything to not have to rethread the needle. <laughs> this is fun, though. I never was good at calligraphy. This would be a reason to learn it. If you think of the needles as a flat-tipped marker. Eh, I'm just going to stop. Cut the threads. Can't get the back away. There's too much stitching over there, so pull the back away. I just want to see how it, it behaves when the thread isn't stuck on something without having the backing. All right, let's do a star. Ooh. That's so cool, you guys. Look at that. We'll do a heart. I wanted to do a feather. Do I have room? And I'll do a little itty bitty. I'll do a tiny portion of a teeny weeny little feather. Woo, so loud. I don't know why it sounds so much louder. Alternating. Ooh, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. All right, this is addicting. It's just a little loud. <laughs> I don't know if it's the batting or if it's just the two needles going through is significantly louder. Ooh, what does a pebble look like? <laughs> There's a pebble. There's a pebble. <laughs> Ooh! Ah, almost broke a needle. Okay, there's something in there, I think. <laughs> Probably where the, bat, the back of the fabric's folded over. All right, done playing around. Time to go have fun with my family. <laughs> you guys are my family too, though. You're my Thursday afternoon family. This is why I almost broke a needle. Because I sewed through folded up fabric. Bummer, oh well. 
See what it looks like when you use a double needle? I like it. You like it? It's neat. Isn't that neat? Just make sure that back fabric's not there at all. <laughs> and um, it's the machine feels really sturdy. I, I didn't feel like one of the needles was going to break. I think it was fantastic. A fantastic try. And uh, on the embroidery, I think it would be more fun to have the needles maybe be a little bit closer together. Maybe even a triple needle because there is such a thing as a triple needle. In case you didn't know that. Oh, thank you, Veronica. Yeah, if after the video is over, you hit a thumbs up, other than just being active in the chat, then the YouTube algorithm helps people to find the content that I provide to you guys each Thursday. And uh, I did add the pattern into the, into the school for last week. For this if you're wanting to make one of these it's it's a tremendous difference in how you feel after doing a lot of anything where your elbows are down and uh, I think I did some other things in there I added some some photography to help you understand better what I did last week I will do the same thing for this but not to today probably tomorrow when I come in here to try to clean this mess up and I am trying to get set up to where I can be on Facebook live at the same time as being live in my YouTube channel again. I keep uh, meaning to to get set up to do that and so much to do running a company. I am gonna have a good time. I look forward to spoiling my father and uh, hanging out with my sisters. We were three boys, three girls, and uh, now we're so we don't always get to be together. It's very nice. I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And don't forget to hit the bell and then select all so that you don't miss out on the Fabrically Speaking live show as you adjust to the time change. Because I do go live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we don't change our clocks. With that, I bid you adieu. Love you guys. See you in the school. Oh, by the way, yeah, I do have create.clairowley.com as my school. And the links to that, as the links to all of the products you saw me use here today, are in the description below after this ends. Know that this was live on November 11th, 2021. And I will see you next week. Bye. Mary, I didn't do my turkey recipe yet. And now 